This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Please be seated. Morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Good. How are you? I'm well. Would you do me a favor, please, and introduce yourself to the jury? Tell us your name. So I'm Sergeant John Jorstead with the Gwinnett County Police Department. All right. And uh, Sergeant Jorstead, uh, how long have you been with the Gwinnett County Police? Uh, coming up on nine and a half, almost ten years. Are you a post-certified law enforcement officer with the powers of arrest in the state of Georgia? Yes, sir. Have you been so since you've been a police officer with Gwinnett County? Yes, sir. Prior to working with Gwinnett County Police, uh, did you have any prior law enforcement experience? I did not, know. Now, uh, what is your current assignment at the Gwinnett County Police Department? Currently, I'm assigned to our Central Precinct, uh, A-Cycles, Day Watch. I'm a shift supervisor. Okay. Now, uh, how long have you been doing that? Uh, approximately three months. Okay. Prior to that, what was your assignment? Prior to that, I was a corporal in our homicide unit. And how long did you spend in the homicide unit? About two and a half, almost three years. Now, as a, uh, a member of the Gwinnett County Homicide Unit, did you assist or participate in the investigation uh, in the death of Susanna Morales? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, specifically, I want to take you to uh, February 7th of 2023. Uh, were you assisting that day with, in, the invest in the death investigation of Susanna Morales? Yes, I was. Uh, and, and what was your, uh, walk the jury through what your role was that day? So that day, um, we had gathered all the uh, pre-recruits, the pre-academy recruits, and we were conducting a, a line search out where the remains of Ms. Morales were found uh, for any additional evidence that, that might be in the woods. Um, so we were kind of had a briefing at our headquarters. We went out to the side of 316. We had all the recruits line up, and we'd have a, an officer or detective you know, with a group of recruits, and we just slowly walk the line through the woods to see if we could uncover any evidence or, or anything. Very good. Now, what time, if you if you recall, just approximately did y'all start that? Uh, it was probably mid-morning, 9 to 10, 10 a.m. And how many different personnel that were conducting, it, it, and again, uh, we may not, you may not recall exact numbers, but just give us an estimate of the number of folks who were participating in doing this grid search. I would say around 50. <clears throat> In, in the briefings that you had, and maybe just in standard operating procedure, when you're doing a grid search, what is the, uh, what, what do y'all do if somebody finds something? So if somebody finds something, they're to stop, raise their hand, get the attention of a detective or an officer, and that way the officer or detective can come over, look at what they found, and kind of determine whether or not it's pertinent or not. And, and so the 50 or so people that you talked about, is that, was, was who all consisted of those 50 people? So we had um, pre-recruits, we had detectives, we had road officers, um, I believe there was some CSI personnel, members of the um, medical examiner's office, as well as the DA's office. All right. Now, uh, you said pre-recruit. What's a pre-recruit? So a pre-recruit is when you're hired and you've accepted the job as a police officer, um, you're called a pre-recruit because it's before the academy starts. We try to gather up anywhere from 20 to, to 50 applicants uh, prior to going into the academy. So they do various jobs around the department um, with, you know, help out with evidence unit. They'll, they do various tasks. So employed by the police department but not yet in the academy or a, a certified police officer. Yes, sir. That day, on February 7th of 2023, uh, did you participate in the grid search? Yes, sir, I did. As you were participating in the grid search, did you observe anybody who signaled that they had found something? Yes, uh, there was one pre-recruit. Uh, he had signaled to me that he had found something, and I walked over and looked at what he found. How close were you whenever he signaled you? Um, probably no less than 20 yards away. Now, uh, he signaled you, and when you walked over there, what did you first observe? Uh, there was a Glock 19 handgun underneath some pine straw. Judge, if I can just ask, I need to grab an exhibit sticker from up here. Sure. Uh, left them up here. Oh, okay. Sir, may I approach with us? Certainly. 
Right, I'm going to show you where I've marked this case. It's exhibit number 42 and 42.1. Would you take a look at these? Let me know if you recognize them. Yes, I do. All right. I'm going to start with state's exhibit number 42. What is state's exhibit number 42? Uh, it's a Glock 19 handgun uh, with a TRL 7 weapon light on it. All right. And is it in the same or similar condition as it was whenever? Uh, is it, well, let me ask you is this the Glock 19 that you observed in the woods on February 7th uh, near Susanna Morales' body? Yes, sir. And is it in the same or similar condition as it was when you observed it on February 7th of 2023? Yes, yeah, similar condition. When we found it, it was, you know, magazine in, slide to the front. Um, but yes. Okay. Judge, I move to admit State's Exhibit number 42. No objection. State's Exhibit 42 is admitted without objection. And also number 42.1. Do you recognize these? Yes, I do. All right. And what are those? These are the live rounds of ammunition that were inside the magazine uh, that was in the gun. All right. And, and that's the gun that you've identified here and has been admitted as State's Exhibit number 42? Yes, sir. All right. And is this in the same or similar condition as it was uh, when it was found inside the gun? Yes, sir. All right. Judge, I move to admit State's Exhibit 42.1. No objection. State's Exhibit 42.1 is admitted without objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, may I publish these? Certainly. All right. Now, Sergeant Lewis, I'm going to let you handle it. Okay. Uh, so, you have a familiarity with firearms? Yes. Okay. Um, and if you would, obviously, even though I know this is unloaded, uh, describe for us what, what is going on here with the green lock just so that we can all be safe and clear. Yes, so the, the green lock is so the slide cannot go forward, therefore nothing can be fired out of the weapon. Um, the slide would have to be forward and around in the chamber for the firing pin to work for it to strike the primer and the, the ammo, and then it would it would go off. All right, and so essentially this firearm currently in its current state is, is non-operational. You could not fire this weapon. Correct, you could not fire this okay. weapon. Um, if you would, can you remove it from the box? And obviously, even though it's not loaded and cannot fire, if you would avoid pointing it at yes. it in the courtroom. Uh, now, the, uh, this weapon here, Glock 19, as you've identified it, uh, what kind of rounds does it hold? Uh, it holds 9 millimeter rounds. All right. And these here, they're in 42.1, and I'll hold those up since your hands are full. Uh, these <coughs> live rounds, these bullets that are in here, are these 9 millimeter? Yes, they are. All right. Were these, uh, and strapped onto the handle of this uh, Glock is a magazine, do these bullets go into that magazine? Yes, they do. And were they found inside of that magazine? whenever it was recovered. Yes, they were. And you mentioned a moment ago that the slot, that, that it was not, in, it did not look like this whenever you found it. Uh, describe to the jury what the differences were. So the difference would be uh, the magazine would be seated here in the magazine well, and the slide would be forward. Um, so you wouldn't, you'd have more of a 90 degrees instead of having the slide cocked back like this. Okay. Now, in, at the time that you found it, was the gun capable of or not? I'm going to check. Was it in a position with the slide closed in the magazine where it could have fired around? It could have, yes. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I'll have you return that to the box here. Uh, after this firearm was recovered, uh, was it taken into evidence? Yes, it was. Okay. That day out there on scene, did you have any other further responsibilities uh, on February 7th of 2023? No. After we found that, um, the firearm, we, we collected that with our CSI, and then that kind of ended my, my role for that day. Understood. Uh, about six days later, February 13th of 2023, were you still involved in 